Hello, dear friends at Salem Lutheran. I'm in one of my favorite places in churches, the kitchen. That's where all the action happens. And uh, welcome to our message for the week after 4th of July holiday. Hope you had a good time off, or if you were off, and uh, had some restful time on this 4th of July. A um, few uh, new announcements. Uh, we continue to have new COVID updates, so... Please pay attention to those, but everything's returning uh, fairly back to normal. We've got a couple things that we still practice with communion and such, and we still kind of encourage uh, distancing. But nonetheless, uh, things are going back to normal, and uh, most of us are vaccinated, so that's good news. Uh, virtual Vacation Bible School, I have a hard time saying that. Uh, virtual Vacation Bible School begins on the 12th and will be sent out like it was last year on uh, the 12th and every following Monday after that. So the year's theme is Mystery Island. So I hope you'll join us. And uh, hey, if you have kids, grandkids, whatever, um, just give us a call. We can set you up with the packages or at least share them so that they possibly can watch them as well. Uh, the garage sale is going to uh, have it was going to happen this year over the Labor Day weekend. It's a great opportunity to uh, rid yourself of some of those things that you're wondering, should I keep that or should I throw it away? Well, don't do either. Send it to the garage sale and we'll sell it for you. And uh, there are some things we don't want to be donated, so please look at that list as well. Otherwise, we get stuck with trying to pay for those things to be deposited. Uh, Kay Tellickson is always available to help you out on that. You can shoot an email to the church office. We'll get back to you as well. And uh, reminding me uh, that I should tell you that Michelle's hours have changed. And uh, I'm not going to list them here, but you can see those in the email blast and uh, uh, see, see on the website for those hours as well. Uh, Michelle's beginning her education and... Uh, going quite well so uh, we wish her well and so glad that she's able to stay on uh, throughout this time. Uh, if you're interested in technology or even if you're not that interested in technology our stream team is in need of members. Uh, they're the ones that are going to make sure that we have a streaming live service for those folks who cannot make it to church and uh, appreciate uh, your volunteering for that. It's a very important ministry that we do. Uh, we have uh, a happy birthday wish once again to Verna Artwell. She turned 100 and had her birthday party here uh, this last weekend. And to continue to keep in our prayers our custodian, Kirk. Many of you know that he has some serious challenges ahead with his health issues. And keep him in your prayers. And uh, we know that the doctors have got a plan of treatment for him and pray that uh, he is able to uh, endure that treatment and send him good wishes. Uh, so those are the announcements uh, for this week. We have a very interesting story on tap from the Gospel of Mark. Um, might you have a hint here and know what our story is about? Or maybe this will help you if you didn't guess it by now. Yes, it is John the Baptist, and it is one of those stories that we don't really like to talk about very much. It's kind of a brutal story. Uh, John the Baptist, head on a platter, and uh, many people have made a lot of that since, and it's a common idiom that people will refer to. So we ended up our story last week. Uh, the disciples went out, they, you know, they dusted their feet and they were able to go to certain homes and they cast out demons and anointed many who were sick and cured them. And then we begin at 14, uh, verse 14, 614. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, It is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. And now we're going to switch to past tense in the story 
that we're going to talk about what happened uh, to lead up to these particular circumstances. And as you listen to the story, you want to realize that Mark is paralleling John the Baptist's story with Jesus' story. And so when he talks about his death and being raised from the dead, there is certainly a parallel message uh, between John the Baptist and Jesus. So let's continue on in verse 17. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for all his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet, out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. I hope you picked up on some of those nuances and the parallels to Jesus' life as well, because Mark certainly intends that. Um, John is not just the forerunner to Jesus, but he is actually the, the template for the story that will follow. And the story is one of those dramas that you know, when people say the Bible is boring, um, this, this could be made into quite a movie. Uh, you think about all the psychological and emotional dynamics going on in here. You've got Herod, who really kind of likes John the Baptist, enjoys getting together and listening to him. He all of a sudden is forced by his oath and his guess to carry out what he promised. And this seems like a rather um, brutal request, even if you have a grudge against somebody. Um, the daughter is simply used in the process. Uh, Herodias refuses to repent. There's also a character in the Old Testament that I'll talk about on Sunday uh, that you recognize her name, who follows this same pattern. And then finally we have John the Baptist, who is the righteous truth teller. And uh, the story seems like something that's right out of a Pulp Fiction drama or some kind of daytime soap opera. Betrayal, manipulation, deceit, a lot of hand washing, filling the scenes. What else could I do? Both Pilate and Herod justify their actions. There is a high and mighty fight behind the curtain of royal power. Herod's banquet is only the first of two. Jesus will host a second one. We'll see how that ends. So thanks for joining me for our message and short commentary on our upcoming text. I hope that you will join me on Sunday. Be still and know that the Lord is God.